So welcome to another behind the theme. Today we're talking about chaos in the over again with a focus on the siege. Now, again, just for a quick refresher, this is basically talking about how the gameplay in Chaos in the Overworld, for my experience, was very much I was like I played it two times. But the because I knew the law of Warhammer Fantasy so well, I actually could steer my strategy quite well, and I did okay in the game. And so it really shows how the theme is reflected in the gameplay. And so today. I like to talk about a lot of less known facts about Zinge and at the same time also talk about how it basically the game design is focused on the theme and how it reflects the theme in general. Now Zinge most importantly is known as the changer of ways. He's also known as the Raven God. The Chaos God of Change, Sorcery, Manipulation, Evolution, Destiny, and Lies and Trickery. And again, like Korn, uh, you know, the good thing about Warhammer in Games Workshop line is that it's not just they're all total bad, although if there was a total bad, it probably would be Zinch in a way, you know, because due to manipulations and everything, but at the same time, you know, he embodies something that is also good, so such as change, evolution, you know, and working towards your destiny. Now, Zinch, of course, is also known by many names like every other Chaos God, because they have basically lived through the existence, and so Zinch is no different. Now, his name in the Dark Tongue is known as Zanesh. And in Norska, in the north, he's known as Cha, the Great Eagle. And in the um, eastern steppes, basically think of these people, the Kurgan, as the Mongols in Warhammer Fantasy, he's known as Chen the Deceiver. Now, of course, I like to usually start with a favorite story. And for me, for Zinj, this is actually a follow-up, basically giving the more details about the story, also same for Korn. And if you want to watch the corn video, I'll click on the link here. In the time of the old ones, you know, the people trying to take down were using unrestrained magic. There was a lot of mutations and it was so unrestrained that demons were going about. So Zinch was literally the foremost among the um, four brothers. So Korn came about and he basically got Nurgle and Slanish to join him. And they ambushed basically Zinch. And Zinch so powerful he managed to beat off both Nurgle and Slanesh. And what was left was basically Korn on top a great mountain and fought a duel for ages. And in the end, they were both neck and neck, power and par, until Korn managed to grab the neck of Zinch, alright, and throw him down from the top of the peak. As basically Zinch hit the ground, his physical form shattered. Uh, into 10,000 pieces as which flew across eternity, each one forming the incantation of magic power, which is, of course, um, example, all the spells and everything that every mage in the Warhammer world uses is basically Zinch. And of course, that was how Korn became ascendant. But it also show how basically magic, in a way, came about in the Warhammer world, which is really interesting. Now, Zinch has many forms as the change of ways, but one of the forms he's known for at least for himself, when he takes his demonic form, is his face will become puckered, it would sink back into his body, which it just peeks out of his upper torso. He has two snakes that will stick out of his um, shoulder, or horns, and he stands atop a perpetual mist, and his skin has crawling faces all over it, of which can appear anywhere. And the thing about each of these faces is that as he speaks, every one of these faces speaks. You know, again, change of ways. Now, this person number is the number nine, and his symbol is the reading flame of change. And of course, all this affects his army numbers. And of course, the um, true name of the, um, Zinch demons are in the syllables of nine. His totem animal is mostly avian, such as the eagle, the raven, the condor from the eastern steppe. And his biggest rival is Nurgle. And that is because Zinj looks to long-term planning and to build up stuff so that his schemes come about. Whereas Nurgle, the whole goal is to bring everything down. He basically destroys everything that Zinj builds up in a way. Now Zinj is also usually the guy who brings about Chaos Undivided. Chaos Undivided is when the four gods put aside their differences, come together and form basically a world-ending army every single time. And sends it across the old world. You know, this is example in 40k with uh, Abaddon and the current law. There's, I can't remember his exact name right now, but I'll put a picture of him right now. And he does this, of course, to bring about like, eventually his own schemes. Now, Zinch is known as well as the future. 
but the thing is, so many things that he does, you know, always has a end goal, basically. But there are some who say that Zinj, sometimes he does things, not because of just the goal, but sometimes he just likes to see chaos and turmoil. You know, sometimes, sometimes later he may just do something because he wants to see the world go up in flames, basically. And going back on that point about um, Zinj being all magic, the fact that anyone who uses magic basically is touching the essence of Zinj is such a, you know, big revelation that in Kiss Left in the Empire and in the Empire itself, um, those that know the fact basically are not allowed to talk about it because imagine a world where they can't use magic anymore. You know, it's so entwined in their lives that they can't. And now proceeding to the point on Zinj's followers, uh, Zinj has the least number of followers among the Chaos Gods. And I, one of the main reasons, I think one of the best reasons, is because as Chaos Gods go, he is the one you trust the least. Because he is hold, you know, one of the things he's known for is lies and deceit. And so when, most of the time, when other gods give you a gift, such as Kor, Nurgle, or Slanesh, it's usually good for you, right? In some way. With Zinj, it could literally be absolutely no good for you. So basically, he's not a god you should trust in any way. And you're not going to outwit someone who knows the future. Now, Zinj in the Empire, or most of his followers are strangely what you would call the educated. People who seek knowledge, people such as mages, and of course his own um, followers in covens, which are mostly underground. And in Norska, the people who pray to Zinj are mostly the shams and the soothsayers. And they pray to Zinj basically for preeminence over the chieftain. Because, you know, usually the northern Norska, they pray to Korn because it's a very martial kind of society. Now, still, Game Workshop has not come up with a line this, which is pretty sad for me because I always thought they would be pretty cool. Is the China of uh, the Wamu world, the Catanians, or rather Cate, they actually worship Zinj openly, you know, foolishly to a certain extent, but they are, you know, worship of Zinj is actually an official cult of the country. Now, unlike Korn, who refuses to use magic, if Zinj finds that brute strength allows him to achieve his goals, he'll be more than happy to use them. And that's why, unlike what most, uh, or even myself, I thought, Zinj warriors are actually the second most powerful in the Chaos hierarchy. And that is because not only are they given great strength, like I said, Zinj is not against using brute strength, they are also great magic users. So basically, they are the type that not only are they a good warrior, there's a good warrior that can, for example, go invisible or fly or something like that. And like Korn, it's almost impossible for most people not to pray to Zinj in some way, especially in terms of the armies. Because even Nurgle and Slanish followers, to basically use the magic to call upon for their god, they have to use magic, which again is the essence of Zinj. So, you know, even those followers know to leave little offerings to Zinj to gain his favor in that way for the spells to work and everything like that. And everyone in the world is basically affected by Zinj in some way because, he, remember, he's changed. So even if a corn warrior wanted to become better, to evolve into a demon, or to gain a new uh, power, mutation, whatever, Basically, he has to be touched by Zinj in, in some way, you know. I mean, he might not do it openly, well, but he is affected by Zinj to affect the change. In fact, without Zinj, you know, I like this piece of lore that if there was no change, there will be no death in the world. And none of the Chaos followers can basically be granted blessings by their god. Now, Zinj followers, like I said before, are the least number among the Chaos gods because, well, you shouldn't trust him, rightfully so. Now, Zinj followers, like I said before, although few in number, they make up for it in their amazing cunning. And of course, like I said, they're the second best warriors in chaos. When a Zinj army marches, riving flame of magic basically hovers over them because of the collection of magic. And on top of that, if they bring war altars to Zinj, they increase their magic flow, which at the same time it can be so powerful, it allows them to see the future and affect things such as tactical supremacy and everything like that. And the cool thing about that is that even when you be beaten by an army of Zinj, let's say they run away or whatever, you never know if that was actually part of the plan, that they might actually attack you from somewhere else later on. And in some way, every person in the world, you know, is basically Zin's pawn to be used to effect the plan that he eventually wants to come about. Now, 
being a Dane follower has its great benefits. You know, great magic and great strength and all. But there's also a downside, it's a massive downside, is that Zinch has the most mutations in the chaos forces. And it's not even like it's something usually you can hide. Zinch changes are pretty massive, you know, on your physical form. On top of that, usually Zinch's gift to you as you evolve more, you know, drives you more and more insane, basically turning you into a mindless uh, chaos beast. Now, of course, there are those who don't, who become changer of ways and all that, but it's a very dangerous thing. You know, great power comes with, you know, great risks. And for all those who eventually succumb to the madness and the insanity, what happens is that when, when they pass on, they basically go into the realm of Zinch and they serve him for eternity. Now, the realm of Zinch is a crystal labyrinth and this is woven from the raw magic of the world and treaded by deceit and conspiracy of the world. Now, the strange thing about this realm is that it forces a person in there to see it all nine dimensions. All right, again, nine, the special, you know, number of Zinch. And it is the only place among the realms which has no defenders. For basically, it doesn't need it because anyone going in, basically, it tears apart their aspirations and their purpose. And the more you go in there, it's the shifting of the, the basically land itself and all. It drives a person insane. If you even manage to find yourself, go get anywhere which can basically even get close to where Zeech is. And the location of Zinch realm is also very important because his realm is the connector, all right, for all the other realms of chaos. For example, Korn to Nurgle and all. His is the connecting lands, basically. And these hidden paths that lead to the other realms are basically built upon lies and schemes. Now, in the middle of the Crystal Labra is, of course, the Impossible Fortress. Now, it's called the Impossible Fortress because, you know, if you even how manage to get there, it's form is ever-changing. Spires will pop out, doors will disappear, there could be a thousand doors in the, in the moment, or then suddenly just in the next it, it, same moment, you could basically have no doors. And the uh, Impossible Fortress actually does not exist in time and space. And the only people that can navigate inside the Impossible Fortress are the Lords of Change, which are the greater demons of Zinch. In fact, inside the Impossible Fortress, if you get in, the is so strongly affected by Zinch that Zinch's passing thought can kill you. Now, on top of just getting the impossible turtle, getting inside the impossible fortress, when you get inside, there's another place that you probably would want to go to because that's probably where Zeech will also be, is the hidden library. Now, this is the collection of all the knowledge in the universe. It's the hall of eternal dimensions and it contains the well of eternity, of which Zeech actually looks into his magic waters to find out the uncounted possibilities that will come in the future. And he uses these to, of course, effect his schemes and everything like that to see what will happen and what might not happen, what could happen, so on and so forth. Now, so let's now get into the kind of um, units you use in Chaos and the World for Zinch. And of course, the most numerous of Zinch demons are the Horrors. Now, the cool thing about Horrors is that wherever they step, it will never be the same again. And they are, body is basically this ever-changing form of blob, you know, with basically a round ball with their faces can appear anywhere, like, you know, demonic form of Zinch, and with, with appendages of arms and legs. And their power is to basically unleash magic power on their foes, and they are made literally from the raw energy from the realm of chaos. Now, they come in several colors, such as usually in uh, pink or blue horrors, but as, of course, they can go in different hues of purple and so on. And the thing about strange about the horrors is that as they gather, all right, their individual form actually kind of mars, you know, the, the more of them they gather, the more magic they gathers, and they actually seem to be merging together. And wherever they pass by, half of luminescence behind them. Now, my favorite of these um, new character horrors is the Blue Scribes of Zeech. And I'm going to look through this to make sure I get this right. Now, the one of the brothers is called Pitarex, the other is called Zirap. And their goal in life, or rather demonic life, is to learn every spell in existence. And why is that? It's because Zinch wants to reclaim the, all of his form by learning all these spells. Now they ride on a, basically a this or Zinch, which is another kind of Zinch demon. And as they write, they're writing on with ink on parchment on it. Here's the thing. 
Zinj is the lord of the sea. So he himself is also always afraid of being um, betrayed and because he casts extra intelligence on these two to prevent them from ever betraying him. What Zinj did basically curse in a way. Now Pitarix can transcribe syllables to glyphs and runes onto paper. But the strange part is he, he can't read it but but Zerapit can read his brother's writing, but he can't understand it. Which is freaking interesting, because they don't understand what they're basically recording in a way, or reading. So on the battlefield, when these two are um, summoned, they literally write on their zin on their dis or zinch, and they cast random spells. It is total chaos. Now the next character is not really a horror, um, but I feel that he's a really interesting character in the Zinch um, pantheon of demons. And this is the change. Now again, uh, Zinj is all about deceit and manipulation. Now, the changeling can, is basically someone who can take any form, from the tiniest insect to a greater daemon. And the only form that this changeling cannot take is of course Zinj himself, because Zinj made sure that no one should be able to take his form. And it is said, the interesting thing is that only Zinj knows the true form of the changeling. He, in fact, it's been so long since the uh, changeling used his own form, or rather even seen his own form, that it's said that the changeling doesn't even remember what he looks like. And the last thing about the changeling is of course that he is so good at what he does, it's said that he has tricked the dark gods more than once. The other and the strongest of Zinj units in Chaos in the World is the Lords of Change. Now the Lords of Change mostly are avian uh, winged humanoids in a way, giant ones. And they are basically the greater demons with the most intelligence, the greatest sorcerers. That is of course paid off in the fact that they are not the strongest greater demons, but they have this ability to cast magic on a level which no other greater demon can. Now the best way to talk about these greater demons is to talk about their most famous Lord of Change, and that is Kairos Fate Weaver. Even Zinj looks into the world of eternity and sees its countless or uncounted possibilities, but even he would not dare enter the world of eternity due to its chaotic rolling currents. What Zinj does is he actually sends his uh, Lords of Change in there, and none have ever returned. Now being frustrated at this, one day he picks up his vizier Kairos, alright, and throws him into the well of eternity. And unexpectedly, Kairos returned. But when he returned, he was totally aged, and he had basically two heads. Now he then had the knowledge of all the futures, but he also was driven insane. So now he sits at the side of Zeej as what is called the Oracle of Change. Now he's constantly mumbling because he's always talking about the countless possibilities. One head would always tell the truth, and the other will always tell something that is untrue. And so, what Zinj does is he actually gathers 81 Lords of Change to record every single word that Kairos Fleet Fever says. And to affect his schemes, there are very few people, usually the champions of chaos and all, who are granted an audience with Kairos to, you know, basically learn of their possible eventual successes or failures. Kairos World Fake Weaver in the Warhammer world is also very much a a bit of a coward. Now the reason why is actually totally granted. Again his master is the master of the scene and all. And whenever he steps onto the battlefield with his um bodyguards, whenever he gets unexpectedly hurt, the thing is that Kairos is afraid that Zeech has hidden away knowledge from him. Like you like Zeech hidden his death from him. So Whenever Kairos gets unexpectedly hurt, he actually sends himself back into the realm of chaos. Now let's talk about the way that you play Zinj in Chaos No World. Now I think like all the history I just told you, the way you play Zinj is actually through the handling of cards. Zinj is the only one with a limit on cards that you can hold, but he has more. So what spells you play to affect the board, and these are game changing effects such as, you know, Zinj is the only one that can open a portal where you don't have to place units beside each other. Alright, so you can literally go from one side of the board to the other. But all this has to be planned, and that's why I'm not really good at playing as Zinj, because it takes this massive amount of planning and handling of which cards to throw away and keep and all. And because his units are not the best at fighting and so on, he just has to maintain this balance with the other powers and basically get the other powers to work with him. And that's how you play Zinj. You know, again, think of what I just said, and think about all the histories I just told you. Doesn't that just come up with the theme? So, 
in conclusion, that is Zeech in Chaos in the Old World. I, you know, tell me if I missed it. Tell me more interesting stories of Zeech or the other gods. So, thank you very much. Till next word.